Naora and welcome to the 14th video in the iLIS tutorial series. Today we're going to cover a rather solid part of grammar, so fasten your seatbelts. It is such a distinctive part of grammar that the introduction will take a little detour over mathematics. In order to show the equation shown on screen, school will have taught you to first multiply 3 by 4, which gives us 12, and then we add 2, and the result is 14. In the equation on the right, we first add 2 to 3, which gives us 5, we then multiply that by 4, which gives us 20. The conclusion we want to draw from this is that although we've used the exact same components twice, we've obtained two different results because the elements were grouped differently. When we project this principle onto the iList language, we end up at the sentence bracket. The sentence bracket consists of a pair of morphemes. The first morpheme, or opening bracket, is lai. The counterpart, which is the closing bracket, is the morpheme yai, or ei. You may choose how to pronounce it. The parallel with the brackets used in math is quite direct. The opening bracket lai marks the beginning of a group of morphemes, and the closing bracket yai marks the end of it. The fundamental purpose of the bracket is to create new sentences within the bracket, which is the gateway to creating dependent and relative clauses in ILIS. Look at the sentence on screen. La nire Maria em lai ha eili ya aima, ir wekado as da aira yai, ha yi anuai ara em yi aima. Because this is a long and rather complex sentence, we're going to break it down completely. The first thing you should notice is that this sentence actually consists of only two words. It has an agent, indicated by the morpheme la, and a topic, indicated by the morpheme ha. Let's go over the topic first. In the middle is the word anuai ara. Since the previous video, we know that this is the eilis word for house. In front of it is the target particle yi. If this particle is used as a prefix, it becomes the equivalent of the English preposition towards. There is still an M particle behind the house, which means that there will be an adjective. Yi aima, again with the same target particle yi, means that the house is given to me, or simply that it is my house. So now, the fact that this sentence contains an agent automatically means that the topic expresses an action rather than a situation. This means that the phrase to my house is actually to be understood as a verb. So, hayi anuai ara em yi aima means as much as coming or going to my house. So, who is coming to my house? Well, ni re Maria, a girl named Maria or simply Maria. Behind the name is a characteristic particle, M, which means that the following roots will provide additional information about Maria. The remaining roots are enclosed by a sentence bracket, which means that we're dealing with a subordinate clause. This subordinate clause, in turn, contains three words, ha, a topic, ya, a patient, and ir, a modifier. Our topic consists of a, knowledge, and li, the origin marker. Therefore, a li means initial knowledge, or also simply to learn. This knowledge is given to aima, myself. And our modifier ir starts with ue kado, which means seven days, and asta aera, which, as you know, means, right, the past. So the entire subclause ha e li ya aima ir wekado as da aira means I got acquainted seven days ago. The subclause carried by the sentence bracket is linked to the preceding characteristic particle m, which in turn is linked to the agent of our sentence, which is Maria. So back to the full sentence. La nire Maria em lai ha e li ya aima Maria, whom I met seven days ago, is coming to my house. 
Within the bracket, the individual words do not have a fixed word order, so you can move them around freely according to your preference. Also, there is nothing that impedes you from embedding several subclauses within each other, if you are the type of person that is into complex syntactical structures. The purpose of the ILIS language is that you can assemble small parts in a big number of ways. Also with the sentence bracket, the combination with the morpheme immediately preceding it incorporates a wide range of additional nuances that you can use to express yourself. Let's look at an example. Ha-e-li-ya-aima, which means I get acquainted. It is enclosed in a sentence bracket. Let's try a few combinations with root words and see what happens. With the characteristic particle M, with whom I get acquainted. The modifier of cause, irar, because I get acquainted. The modifier of consequence, iris, in order for me to get acquainted. The time particle, as, the time when I get acquainted. The position particle, an, the place where I get acquainted. The topic marker, ha, the fact that I get acquainted is given. The agent marker, la, the fact that I get acquainted sends, gives, or does something. The patient marker, ya, the fact that I get acquainted receives, gets something. The particle of manner, am, the way I get acquainted. Reason and manner combined, aram, because of the way I get acquainted. It is also worth pointing out that all we have done is adding different roots to one and the same phrase. No other modifications were made. Still, in the English translations, we've had to add words, conjugate or modify our verbs, or switch the word order just to keep our sentences grammatically correct. The coverage of the sentence bracket adds yet another two powerful tools to our inventory of the ILIS toolbox. When you are speaking ILIS and you want to add a lot of information to a particular object, just open up a sentence bracket and continue talking about the object in question, as long as you don't forget to close the bracket again afterwards. Otherwise, unicorns will die. Hanaina ora la aima yawete. See you soon.